Hello everyone. Today we are going to see about React code splitting. So this is a simple technique which um, enhances the loading speed by drastically by significantly reducing the initial build size. So what is the problem we are solving? Imagine we have a uh, hundred routes in a product and the routes have different dependencies and uh, they have their own complexities and everything as React by default. So I'm here I'm using the create react app. So it out of the box comes with webpack and um, it by default the, the, the web app we get from here bundles everything into one JS file. So whatever we have any components we have anything will be bundled into one JS file and when we when we try to open that it's going to download the whole JS bundle it bundled from all the scripts we have right the JSX everything so it has to download the whole thing whole JS file so that's 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 the problem we are going to solve today let's uh, if you want to follow go to this repository and clone this so once you are ready once you have installed dependencies and run open the dev tools and go to the network tab i'm disabling cache to retry again again and again so right now we don't have any code splitting going on this is by default we are um about the project we have two components and we are using react route we have two routes one is the root route which points to the home component and uh, the contact slash contact will go will get us to the contact page this contact component is a bit heavier as you can see uh, we are using a button from material ui so let's see what happens when we refresh um, maybe let's open an incognito Open DevTools and network, enable disable cache, refresh. Okay, and uh, just for demonstration, I'm going to set this to slow 3G. Let's do it again. Restart, refresh. Okay, so it actually uh, made five requests as you can see. Um, the total transfer the size is 754 the resources for mb took 19.16 seconds yeah the dom content loaded at 19.47 seconds so that's a stack we have without lazy loading without uh, lazy loading so let's do lazy loading for that i'm going to I'm going to lazily load as I said the contacts component has some heavy uh, third party dependency so I'm going to lazily load this let's comment that and uh, we are going to use react.lazy the react lazy is going to get a function which allows us to import the cont so we are changing this line into this using react lazy and we are passing this as a function and also we, we need to do one more thing we have to wrap the actual component with react.suspense so this suspense and the lazy both work together to do or to to communicate with webpack to tell that this car this code the whatever behind this component need not be built in the initial build and that also asks for a fallback fallback is just a component we can have just a div okay so this is a fallback until so as this uh, chunk of code is going to be lazily loaded until then this fallback component will be displayed let's do it again let's refresh okay so it has loaded so this is the stats we have uh, we have now as you can see the vendors dot main chunk the main chunk and the vendors dot main chunk both have been drastically reduced let me copy this this paste this here this is with lazy loading 
So the performance, the load time, the DOM content loaded time has reduced 6.3 seconds. And we have also uh, consumed less resources. From, we have reduced that from 4 MB to 1.9 MB. And also, and, and uh, a side note is that this is, a, this is not an optimized production build. When we do a production build, it's going to be much lesser than this. And also we have re um, reduced to the transfer size, um, whatever kilobytes. That is a co combination of all these chunks. And that, that, that's all we, uh, we have to do to lazily load a component. But let's discuss more. Okay. So, so the, our, our user is in a slow 3G and it's going to take again some 12.9 seconds with uh, 13 seconds with lazy loading. We have, okay. Now, so see here, this is the, like a timeline. When I click the contact, it freshly downloads that piece of chunk. Chunk one, chunk two, and for clarity, we can even rename this. If you don't like this names, or actually no one is going to care about this, but still, we can rename that by using this syntax. This is called magical magic comments by Webpack. I'm going to name this contact page. So what problem I'm addressing right now is that, okay, so the user is now seeing the first render in 13 seconds. That is six seconds less than the no, uh, no lazy loading version, right? Which is a good, good improvement. Six seconds is a huge improvement. But one small problem is that, so when this contact page is obvious for the user and he clicks it, it's taking some time right so it took like 6 point 6 point to 8 point 4 seconds the point of single page applications is to work like a mobile application so this is some in some situations this won't be acceptable like if we have all these pages and this, if these pages are going to take too long um, but anyways this is much better than the first one the first uh, without lazy lazy loading the first render if it is too loud maybe too slow maybe the user will just close it and go away um, we are just splitting the delay this is a better version but uh, but still uh, if there is a situation where we where the user is expected to click this contact right away or we in an obvious way then we can communicate with webpack we can prefetch them using this magic command so I'm just setting this prefetch to true so already we have a chunk name contact page and we are seeing the contact page chunk name instead of 123 and now I'm asking the webpack so this is the way uh, they ask us to communicate this is a weird way I know uh, we have syntax in through a comment through the form of command which is weird but still this is the way we are going to communicate with the webpack to say that I want this contact what this prefetch webpack prefetch true will do is that here it will download the the javascript bundle required for the home only the only the home and at once the browser gets free it will automatically start prefetching this contact whatever the js required along with the vendors it will immediately start downloading these files also. So let's look at that. So we have given this webpack prefetch true. Let's see it in action. So it's, it's the actual vendor's main chunk and the main chunk are downloaded. And once it is done, you can see silently in the background, it is downloading the contact page chunk. And it is done. Now when I click, also uh, remember to disable the disable check cache when I click contact now it will immediately come and when you look at the size it says served from the prefetch cache so 
this prefetch is an amazing technique too but should we do it for all the contacts we have to be um, selective when we want to do because anyways this it, uh, it happens in the ba ba background and it, it won't come it won't disturb the user experience uh, it is consuming some kilobytes so we have to be selective about what to prefetch and what not to so these are the techniques uh, we use for lazy loading and in my experience uh, in my recent experience I took a project which was uh, poorly optimized I mean it was a huge comp huge site but they, they were not optimized I was able to just use this technique again and again uh, with the lazy loading and the webpack prefetch selective webpack prefetch not all the routes but some routes and I was able to significantly reduce the bundle size and also significantly improve the load time of the initial thing, uh, initial render. So that's all about lazy loading. Thank you. See you in the next video.